Hey there folks, I thought we'd have a quick little look at, well probably won't be quick, but we're going to have a look at the Rising Eagles, Austerlitz, Malay uh, combat and how that all has worked in this particular instance here. And just to put a little bit of context around this, last night we were playing and moving chits around to represent the various formations through the fog and no one knew where anybody was. And as the, um, the forces have closed in on each other, uh, now we have Bagration and Lanes, Olans, uh, folks are uh, uh, engaged with each other. They've now seen each other, so we can now deploy the forces on the map and we can see what happens from there. And uh, the, this caused orders uh, to uh, approach the Goldbark Heights and then actually move sort of around this direction and try and secure the two victory locations that are to the right of the screen. And so they're doing that. Now they could, they could have uh, gone straight and, and attacked straight into here, but we don't want to do that because we have uh, over here, and there's one counter right there, that is uh, the reserve cav. And one of those two is the real formation. <clears throat> and so we're trying to lure the Russians into fighting here, but we also want to keep moving away so that we can continue with our objective and fight in a little bit better terrain where we can bring our superior quality of troops to bear uh, against the numerically superior Russians although they do have relatively good ratings. You can see some of these are quite good. So uh, we, we rolled for an independent order for this cavalry and it was here and it uh, did a prepared charge and attacked into here to uh, basically no effect. Uh, it was a one-to-one -one attack and uh, the die roll I believe was a seven, which means both sides have to do a quality check. So we're gonna do that right now actually. Well, did I, did I already do that? I don't think I did. I did roll for the others, so the French were okay, and I rolled a 10, and the 10, these guys were okay. So, so that melee is now complete and done. And one of the things that is a little bit difficult to get your, or not difficult, but a little bit different to get your head around here, is you're, you're looking for these um, enhancements to the die rolls because you do a prepared charge or whatever the case may be. Well, this game takes a slightly different tack on, on everything in combat. And it's assuming that you're going to get the best out of your men and your weapons and your combined arms and all the rest of it when you do all the right things. When you don't do all of the right things, i.e. if I had have not done a prepared charge here, I would have had a, a malice against me or a negative DRM applied against my die roll of plus two because I didn't do the prepared charge, right? So that's the that's the difference here. And a lot of the time you, you, you're going about, uh, in a lot of other games, you go about the effort of optimizing your gameplay and your movement and your positioning and your distance from the enemy to get the best result and get them collect you know, collect up the most goodies and the, the most DRMs. Well, here, it's assumed that you're not a dumbass and you're going to do the best things. And if you don't do the best things, then you pay the price. So I kind of like that. It keeps the game much, much simpler to execute against. Now you're looking to make sure that you're not doing something wrong and that you are indeed doing something right. And you don't have to worry about telling up all these DRMs and doing a morale check before you charge and all that sort of stuff. Now there are counter charge opportunities. I could have, in fact, here, I have cavalry. I could have counter charged these units, but I decided not to because I want to keep uh, these guys fresh, first of all, and I want to keep them moving quickly because I want to identify over here, this unit here, I want to make sure that that is not the guard's core and know that we're going to be in a whole bunch of trouble in just a minute. So I want to, I want to keep these guys moving pretty quickly and keep them out of being tied up in this in an engagement here. 
the sooner we move past uh, vibration and down towards these two Vitry locations, the more pressure we put on the Russian uh, right flank. So let's come back to this Malay here. So this unit here went one, two, three to there, and he's going to uh, attack in here. And this guy moved up and he's going to attack in there. Now, now because these units are not being attacked, they're, everyone is attacking here, there's a, there's a possibility of opportunity fire. Now, that artillery was not at the top of the stack to begin with. I, I put it on the top of the stack to show you, but there's 10 factors of artillery in that hex there. And <clears throat> I just need to check one thing before I keep talking here about range. No, range is fine. So uh, they get to execute opportunity fire as these boys you know, move into this little village and trying to take, take this village away from the 60, uh, 64th there. So they fired and in fact were very effective because they had 10 factors and they reduced these guys, but these guys made their morale check or their quality check, their QFT check and they survived, even though they had to add, uh, add one to the die roll, they still survived. So they got to continue with their melee and carry on into the attack. But before we do that, we, we need to allow these guys to have their defensive fire. Now they could choose this stack or that stack to fire at. And they chose to fire at this stack because it has two very large brigades, 10 sevens, right? So relatively good quality units. Uh, this the reason why I, fought, I did choose to fire at this guy because that top guy who lost a step was an eight. We flip him over, he's an eight. But now he's a seven because he's taken a loss. And of course, there we go. Wouldn't be a video with Kev without me destroying a stack. Okay. So this this fire this fire had no effect. So. Moving, moving right along, keeping it snappy. <laughs> um, we, so we, we tried to come in on two, uh, you know, two fronts here uh, to bring more forces to bear. Uh, we exposed a flank and took some opportunity fire. There was obviously final defensive fire from these guys here, which was uh, de, minimis, de minimis in effect. And so then we go to and, and get into it and do the actual melee. And there we've got 31 factors attacking 11 factors. So it's only gonna be a two to one attack. Now that would mean I would get a two DRM bonus, uh, subtract two from the die roll in this case. But we've also got to keep in mind that I'm in a village. So I get a, a plus one for the defender and another plus one because these guys are an eight and these guys are a seven and this is the lead formation. Now I could have, if I had chosen to, rotated a unit up to the top of the stack and uh, moved in a higher rated unit, but I don't have one. So there's gonna be another one added to the die roll because of the difference between seven and eight, which means in effect, there is no DRM for the combat because the town uh, is providing a defensive benefit and the quality of the troops is providing a defensive benefit. So we go into the attack. And this is where it, uh, it gets interesting. So high numbers are bad, and we roll a, uh, a 10, and that is an R. And that means that one, one stack of the attackers is going to be reduced, the entire stack. And that's the defender's choice. If it was the other way around, if the defender had received the R, then since you can only attack one stack at a time, the defender's entire stack would be reduced. Well, because we're, we're jerks, we're going to reduce these guys, these two, these two big formations. They're both the same, right? We're gonna reduce both of those guys. One's a seven rated and one's a six rated, but we're gonna reduce them to fives. So that, that's a great result for the French because that has put these guys on their heels here. They do not have to, uh, I believe, 
conduct a quality check, but just in case they do, we'll make a die roll. And I rolled four. So regardless, they would be fine anyway. Uh, I'm gonna double check that they don't have to make that quality check because they did take a loss. Uh, but there is no QFT requirement on this R result. Uh, and I'm just double checking the rules here real quickly. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Yep. That's it. So that's how that works. I just want to make sure I was doing it correctly for you so that you actually saw it the right way. Okay, so uh, that is a very uh, simple, relatively simple uh, little exercise there to uh, expose some of the combat constructs to you. Obviously before that, if I had had artillery that was in range and had a line of sight, I could have fired artillery at this hex to try and perhaps demoralize it or even inflict a loss on it before we attacked. But we didn't have any in range, and uh, we perhaps rushed into this battle a little bit. But the problem we have here is the Russians are, are feeling the pressure because of this potential for this flanking maneuver. They don't know what the what the goal of these guys is, where they're headed, but uh, they they can safely assume because they're moving away from things and flags in this direction that they're headed somewhere over here. Um, now, these, so that what I had to do here was leave behind the artillery with a brigade each to cover the rear. And I had got this cavalry on the flank and then the, th these guys' mission, as you will recall from the last session, is to take on Santon Hill, which is gonna be very difficult to do. All right, thought I'd share that with you and we'll uh, get this up on the on the blog just as quick as we can. Thanks for checking it out. Rising Eagles, the Austerlitz battle from Hexasim.